Shut up and sit down. Thank you once again to the Shut Up Podcast Show. I'm your host, Mark Kearns, with you on episode 113. And on today's episode, we are going to be talking about mixed martial arts. We're going to be talking all about the UFC. We're going to be recapping that. We got a bit of news heading into UFC Tampa and why you probably should watch it. It's flying a little bit under the radar. We also have some stories about... Hector Lombard going to bare knuckle boxing and YouTube stars looking to get in to the UFC. So all that and more. But right now, what I'm going to talk about is not to do with mixed martial arts. It's actually to do about this podcast. And over the next few months, we're going to see a few changes around the Shy Talk podcast show. I'm hoping to introduce a permanent or at least one permanent uh, co-host onto the podcast show. The former formula of the uh, podcast probably will change as well we are probably going to try to revamp the podcast so you'll see a few new changes quite exciting if you're uh if you're on our social medias instagram facebook twitter type into the talk podcast you'll find us you will be able to keep track on all the latest of the new and what do you expect from the shy talk podcast show and all the changes we're going to make along the way we will still have a guest from time to time, but having at least one other person to talk to will be quite nice on the podcast show. I'm not going to lie. It's going to be uh, interesting. I will uh, name the guests, uh, the co-hosts, I should call them, not guests, the co-hosts of the podcast as they are uh, as they are made official. And yeah, stay tuned to our social medias and we'll do that. So all that's to look forward to on the t- 113 show. And finally... Uh, bringing in co-hosts, which is something I wanted to do for a while, not to be honest. But now moving on to the UFC. And I guess we have to talk about Israel Asani and Robert Whittaker. What a fight. Uh, what a fighter uh, at Asani is. Like, uh, to do that to Robert Whittaker, second round. And even in the first round, that fight, if it went any longer, could have been stopped in the first round. Uh, probably the best striker in mixed martial arts is Israel Asanya. Uh Rob, to do that to Robert Whittaker, who's such a tough dude, and does his feint in order to get, he actually allowed himself to get punched in the face to set up that shot, uh, thinking he was going to throw a row, ro- uh, right, to a jab, uh, then Asanya had to adjust and miss, uh, miss the right hand by, like, I think it, millimeters would be the word, and then to catch him the way he did, uh, just oh, incredible, incredible! Just like matrix-like uh, performance by Israel Asanya, and I'm not going to say by far, but definitely the best striker in mixed martial arts today, or at least the most creative striker in mixed martial arts today. Um, because I know MVP is like, what the fuck? Uh, definitely one. Of, he'd probably be pretty pissed off. I'm call him one of the most creative as well. But definitely, I'm going to say it. Out there, Israel Asani, the best striker in the UFC right now, possibly in MMA. Uh, Yeah, and then, unfortunately for Alec Quinta, uh, he lost his fight uh, to unanimous decision to Dan Hooker, uh, who was the co-main event of UFC 243. And you know what? He had a really... uh, Alec Quinta had such a good performance against Khabib. And he was such an underdog. uh, Everybody wrote him off. He did really well well against Khabib on very little short notice. And it just felt that like that was the shot in the arm that he needed to become the next big uh, lightweight fighter. And he's kind of just stumbled uh, in this last few match. And it is like at 32, it's a, it's a bit of a devastating loss losing to Dan Hooker. He's not no, no like stink on Dan Hooker, like great fighter and all that. Alec Quinta, you're talk- maybe maybe make a run into the top five. You'd be a name. You channel ch- uh, challenge it even into the lower top ten, and yeah, it's just really really unfortunate. Not working out for him in the the land down under. Second time fighting in Australia, fought as well. And like Australia, like two of the biggest moments in UFC recent history. Uh, the kick that shocked the world 
as well as then Israel Asanya beating Robert Whittaker in the way that he did. Like, man, you guys are fucking lucky. I don't know if it's like going to Australia develops really good cards, a really unpredictable card. Maybe it's a jet lock that some fighters uh, find it hard to deal with. But uh, Robert Whittaker does most of his training camps in Australia. So we wouldn't have anything, any jet lag at all. Uh, I don't know, but like two of the big, two of the best cards of all time happened in, in Australia. Uh, like incredible, and the atmosphere itself, like that was the Marvel Stadium. We talked about um, just the Marvel Stadium that, like, the deal that Disney did with the owners of the stadium before on the podcast when we were doing comic book podcasts, and like it is incredible. Just the no, when it is full like that. It is it is an incredible sight. Like the crowd there, were incredible, and like it, it's such a good fight country. Uh, country Australia, and uh, really into the combat sports and really into the sports full stop. And you could really really see it uh, on UFC two four three as well. Um, in terms of kind of update news. Uh, medical injury uh, has Ally Quint out for six months, 180 days, a little bit over six months. He had to get an x ray on his tibia, amphibia, and le- left leg, and he is uh, expected to be uh, suspended medically for up to 180 days. Now, that can be reversed um, depending on clearance by a physician. Uh, so uh, he can basically have that as, but right now, um, he's the only one that really suffered any long term um, uh, medical suspensions after that fight, and uh, yeah, even Robert Whitaker getting uh, not really getting put out for too much longer as well. So, but you would you would like to see him take a few months off after this fight, six months off, I think, um, and maybe like I I know if going into that fight, he probably would take the fight uh, differently because you're looking at him going into into that fight, uh, Robert Whitaker. Uh, first round he gets dropped and the fight could be finished you think he's going to be like even if and Robert Whitaker like has came up against grappler after grappler in his last few fights so his grappling isn't that bad and he's now a black belt in jiu jitsu you think his corner is telling him take this fucker down like I don't why are you standing with him like why, what do you have to gain from standing with him uh, absolutely nothing and uh, yeah, so I just wonder about that, and I think maybe after this fight, after he looks back at the tape, he will uh, he will feel a little, there's a lot of things that he could have done better than he did in uh, in kind of in the last in, over the weekend in that fight. But really, really good fight um, between Robert Whittaker and Assad, even though it was very very short. Just Israel's perform and his dance moves co- coming out as well. Um, not a whole, whole fan of this uh, kind of. Of a huge elaborate entrances, like I thought it was a bit cringy, but uh, definitely like in terms of his dance skills, he definitely got them. Uh, I think he made a quote: uh, "Dance culture is Adesanya's culture," basically saying uh, he's from dance culture. And yeah, probably. I wonder if we're going to see more and more from Adesanya um, as it goes on. Uh, I know definitely got a lot of pop uh, in the. Uh, Red social media, uh, so definitely the UFC be encouraging it more and more if he was looking to do it. Uh, so this Saturday, right, we have a UFC is in Tampa. To move on quickly from UFC one four three uh, or two four three, and do you know what? It is a bit of a is a flying so much under under a, a radar. Like it is, a, has some really interesting fights. Or a fight that nobody, literally nobody's talking about. There are some really, really great fights. So if you're a fan, and if you listen to this podcast, I'm going to say you're a little bit of a fan, at least, of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, then this is a card that you, you'll be definitely interested in. Uh, because it has Cron Gracie and Mackenzie Ger- uh, Dern, two unbelievable black, black belts, uh, competing in ADCC, won everything there is to win in. Jiu Jitsu, uh, and yeah, so they're both fighting tonight. Uh, Crown Grace is 5 0 in uh, in the UFC, or 5 0 in his MMA career, full stop. I think he's only fought twice in the UFC, but he's fighting his biggest te- test yet. He's fighting Cub Swanson. And like, I checked uh, when I was doing the research, I went on to see where these two fighters are ranked. Both of them are not even in the top 15, which does them no credit whatsoever because they're definitely. 
top 15 uh, caliber Cup Swanson has fought everybody in the federal division I think that's in the top 15 has came back off a few really unfortunate loss but literally has only fought the top 5 guys that's in that division for the last 5 years and he's still only 25 and 11 um, yeah, so like, and it's such a story career in Cup Swanson. Uh, just a really exciting fighter as well. Doesn't mind getting into brawls, and then he's gone up against the Jiu Jitsu wizard that is uh, Kron Gracie. And like, Cup Swanson is no slouch off the ground, he's not going to be fearful on the ground, he's going to be looking because he likes to pull off a lot of uh submissions on the fly when, when he goes to the ground. So that's going to be really, really interesting. In, like, ground fight. Uh, between Cup Swanson and Cron Gracie. Really, really interesting. Cron Gracie's last win was against Alex uh, Caceres. Um, and again, uh, Cup Swanson's coming off a loss to Shane Burroughs, uh, unfortunately. So, like, Cup Swanson looking to get back on the track against the uh, ever kind of motivated and uh, rolling in terms of Cron Gracie. And there's a lot of pop on Cron Gracie ever since he came into the UFC. And yeah, you can see him building up a bit, a bit of steam. A win over uh, Cup Swanson is going to be huge for uh, Crown Grace. He's going to shoot him definitely into the top ten, and maybe even up the list, maybe the t- top eight in terms of trying to get his next matchup. And then talks about possibly even uh, Gracie going for a UFC title and all sorts. It's this is going to be a big, a big deal uh, if Crown, uh, Crown Gracie wins, and it's going to be a really good fight as well. And that's not even the main event. Um, the main event, well, obviously uh, Mackenzie Dern come back off. Uh, she recently had a child, so she's coming back after that. She has won her last two um, UFC appearances. I think it might actually be three. She's when she came into UFC, she came. Uh, she was really, really active, uh, fighting Amanda uh, Rib- uh, Ribas, which will be a really interesting co- contest in itself. But the main event is the one that you're going to be want to watch. Uh, two of the most exciting female strawweight fighters in Yuan Jinjajic and Michelle Watterson. This is a fight I want to see for a while. Michelle Watterson obviously has uh, the karate background, but she also has a, a strong Thai uh, fighting background that she doesn't even get uh, noticed for because of her nickname, the Karate Hottie, but also has very decent wrestling as well. She's a bit of a full package. Yuan Jinjajic, brilliant takedown defense. Uh, as well as a n- very underrated Jiu-Jitsu on the ground as well, training in American top team. So she's uh, definitely no, no like uh, low level of uh, Jiu-Jitsu uh, training partners in that camp as well. And unbelievable Mu- Muay Thai, one of the best striker, uh, strikers with her hands. Can really just make girls look ugly after a fight. Lo- loves to work her elbows, loves to work to jab. Really, really great striking. For the striking contest alone, this fight is going to be where it's really, really good. And so it's like three fights that on the card that nobody's talking about. And even in UFC 143, there was really only one big fight in it. Uh, Ale Quinta is definitely an interesting fight and always brings uh, a good fight when he's on the card. But the big fight is Adesanya and Robert Whittaker. And there's no fight. The distance between that how big that fight is to everything else was quite great. This fight, there's three like reasonably really good uh, car- uh, fights on this card. If they, these were on uh, Australia, th- that would make it an insane pay per view. And this is us uh, ESPN card. Uh, this is actually a really really good card. It's one that people should really be talking about, but more. But obviously because of UFC uh, two four three, it's hard to then then go. Oh, there's another thing I want to talk about. Uh, USB uh, Tampa. Uh, so yeah, make sure you go 12th October uh, for that one. Moving away from the UFC uh, temporarily and uh, on to bare knuckle boxing and on to Hector Lombard who's going to be making his um, bare knuckle boxing debut at the age of 41 no less. He's a, obviously a former Bellator uh, champion. He's also fought in the UFC um, of just been in the top five for years in the UFC. He's, he hasn't fought in the UFC since t- 2018 uh, at UFC 137. Uh, I think he lost to to Leitis, uh, Leitis. and um, yeah, and I think it was a unanimous decision lost to him. But Hector is just known for his insane punching power and his iron jaw chin, meaning 
it's going to be really, really interesting to see how he does on bare knuckle boxing, how this power translates well to gloves. Now, he's also 41, which you wonder, like, how how long he can go, as well as how much punishment his chin has taken throughout the years of fighting in the UFC and Bellator. So it's kind of something that, like, this is what happens when fighters don't have a retirement plan. They just have to keep fighting. I've seen posters for Rampage Jackson versus... Um, um, oh, Oh, come to me. Um, I, can't, I can't even, but even just Rampage Jackson's uh, still fighting. And you're kind of thinking, there are so many other avenues you could you could go into other than having to get into the ring and fight for maybe a couple of thousand, maybe 50,000 or whatever. Like, and it's, it's sad to see, like, the. Uh, I can understand like a fighter wanting to fight into his forties, feeling that he's not done, feeling that he's more to accomplish. But I can also I kind of feel sorry for his fighter goes. I haven't earned enough. I did, wasn't getting paid enough to retire in my prime of my career, so I kind of have to fight. Like Anderson Silva kind of mentioned out reason why he was still fighting. It was like I've never been able to make this much money in my life. Why would I retire now when I can make so much money? And you kind of like yeah, I guess I guess so, but. Uh, I don't know if it's just selfish from us. Like the idea of the fighters that we have in our head is being ruined every time we see them fight again because they're way past their prime. Or should we just make them let? Or should we just let them make that paper and um, let them fight on? Even if they want to, like who, we're not their parents. Why we should we be? Uh, why should we be stopping them? And yeah, uh, I guess I guess that is the case if they're do you want to fight, but. Once again, I don't think um, bare knuckle boxing does any uh, drug testing at all, so it's an open market for uh, fighters to turn back the clock in other ways. Um, Max Holloway's made kind of statement saying he's one hundred percent definitely going back uh, to lightweight. Uh, he wasn't deterred after losing against um, Dustin Poirier uh, as last time when he went up to become the interim lightweight champion at the face, uh, Khabib Nurmagomedov, and kind of not, not saying he's not got, not going too far ahead of himself. Um, saying he's still a 145er, and that's what the UFC kind of wants him to do. But like he he's, he's down to fight a lightweight, he's down to fight a welterweight, and he's not going to make any wild predictions past uh, his next fight, which is against Volkanovski. Uh, and um, he's saying that he, that's his only focus right now is beating him and then moving on. But saying he definitely wants to go up to 155 pounds. And you know what? If they want him to fight 170, you know uh, what happens at fight night. Uh, so he's like saying basically he'll fight anybody. But he definitely wants to make another run at uh, at lightweight. And maybe if it, he comes off a bad decision against Volkanovski, uh, then yeah, you can see him moving up. Uh, and yeah, in other kind of um UFC news, uh, Anthony Joss- uh, Johnson is interested in fighting in Francis Nunganu. Uh, I covered it last time that he was looking to get back into the UFC. This time a heavyweight. He's uh, obviously has his own uh, uh cannabis company. He's also doing um. He also, yeah, it'd be just lifting weights because he's jacked as fuck, hence he's gone up the heavyweight. And he was kind of looking at, at Alistair Overeem and Junior Dos Santos. But in a recent interview, he was saying that he kind of fancies a fight against Francis Nugano. He's one that, uh, that like, five fans definitely would like to see. Both uh, guys bring a lot of power when they fight. So it'll be really interesting to see. Now, Francis Nugano is scheduled to be in, I think, I don't know if it's the number one contender's fight. Uh, he's in, uh, he's eyeing up a title shot, which he's expected to go down sometimes next year. So he's his hands are tied up and he's not going to get into any fights other than that title fight until then. Uh, so, you know, I think while Andy Joshua, and Andy Joshua, that'd be amazing to see him in a happy, Andy Johnson, uh, Maybe he takes a fight against Alistair Overeem. I I think 
in terms of uh, fights, uh, comeback fights uh, for Anthony, it definitely Alistair Overeem would be would be the one I, I, I would most want to see out of the Junior Dos Santos. Uh, Santos is probably a harder fight for him. And then go on to fight Nangangu, uh, Nangangu after that would be uh, quite uh, quite interesting as well. And then my final story, and it's a story that I kind of didn't want to... Uh, I think I kind of didn't want to cover. Is one of these stories go, will I cover it or is it just this ultimate, ultimate clickbait? And I'm a little bit disappointed with myself that I'm, I'm covering it. But it's Logan Paul, uh, the famed YouTuber who uh, had an amateur box match against KSI. Uh, he's now wanting to fight KSI in, as a pro boxer. So be more rounds, uh, longer rounds. Uh, smaller gloves and they ditch the headgear for this fight. So there's a lot of differences between amateur and professional. I'm sure I think it's three rounds, um, two minute rounds, and it's uh, they have 16 ounce gloves, they have headgear. Oh, I guess headgear is optional, uh, but I'm pretty sure that they had headgear during their fight. Um, pro, it's 10 ounce gloves. No headgear, three minute rounds, and I think they go for about eight to ten rounds is a, an average uh, boxing match. So there's a lot, huge difference step up between um, fighting amateur, especially when you only fought once and it was a draw, and fighting professional. But both fighters uh, want to make the pro debut against each other in an uh, already sold out pay per view uh, fight between one and the other. But Logan Paul, uh, while he was uh, building up this fight. And this literally, this whole article, I know this whole article, everything he says in it, he doesn't mean he's just using it to build up and get clickbait and get attention for this fight. So do I, do I expect to see him fighting in the UFC? No. Do I think there's a chance of him fighting in the UFC? Hold on a second. So first of all, let's, let's go through the clickbait. Uh, so he in the interview, he said... Uh, I relied on my athleticism to carry me through the fight uh, and it almost worked but now I am a boxer I am literally a professional fighter I feel like it uh, then saying that he's been beating up uh, pros which has given him a lot of confidence uh, when talking about the, uh, if he wants to go into MMA he goes I would honestly love to fight in the UFC I want Dana White to put me in the octagon this Dana White put me in the octagon. Um, maybe getting out like a press pass ready, bring a VIP guests around, let them stand in the octagon. Because no way in hell do you want to be staring st- staring across a guy for the last five years has dedicated himself, has got beaten up for the last five years, and has went through the amateur ranks of fighting, has made a pro d- uh, debut or is about to make a pro debut, and you're staring through that fucking animal because you will die. Uh, I think he has a bit of wrestling behind him, so he's not completely out as well. Um, and I think he, he hangs around in circles around the Diaz brothers, so he has pretty. He has a he has like a, he has pretty good uh, kind of links to martial artists that can bring him to the fight. But whether he'll do anything, but in saying that, CM Punk has fought. And if if I thought Logan Paul was to fight CM Punk. Guarantees Logan Paul be a CM Punk. Nine times out of ten. Maybe that's the fight they make. Logan Paul first the CM Punk. That would make that two unbelievable figures. When you're talking about those weird, stupid fights you're putting on, but the UFC don't, doesn't care about weird, stupid numbers because they have a basically a security net uh, with ESPN. ESPN has give, given them, I think, four billion. Or two billion over a space of four years is that's what this is being deal. So they don't care. That's why they're not ch- chasing down Conor McGregor for uh, to come back. They don't give a fuck. They've already got a sugar daddy in ESPN. So I don't think they're that money hungry for big fights. Now ESPN probably wants big money grabbing fights because they want ratings. Hence that's why they're paying for the UFC. They want these ratings and. I don't know what the ratings are being like in the UFC. I don't know if they're meeting ESPN standards. But if you imagine in a scenario where the UFC um, 
are looking a uh, deal is coming up on the table with ESPN they're not or they're not too happy with the the performance of the UFC UFC goes hold on wait till we see what's coming we're going to get Logan Paul and we're going to get in the fight CM Punk that 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 the, the, you imagine the ESPN sit back down at the table and go okay you have my interest uh, it's the only if the UFC are absolutely desperate do I see this fight happen but I'm not not going to rule it out though we are never ever going to see Logan Paul fight in the UFC because you know stranger things have happened we've had Conor McGregor fight Floyd Mayweather and that is definitely more strange of a thing that have happened than Logan Paul actually making the UFC especially when we live in a world that CM Punk uh, has made it into the into the octagon to fight an actual fight against a mixed martial arts fighter anyway that's my show for this week I'll be back. Uh, I should be back next Thursday. Hopefully, I'm back next Thursday. The big new changes could happen, and we might have to change the schedule. So, maybe I'll talk to you next Thursday. Stay tuned to our social medias to find out. Uh, I'll let you know anyway if the day when the podcast is released is going to change, but I'll try to get out on a Thursday. Talk to you soon.